Beyond Shadow of a Doubt, adding eye-catching effects to your animations not only makes them cool and realistic, but also shows how professional you are. And Camera Shake is one of those game-changer effects. So in this project, we're going to learn how to add Camera Shake Blueprint to our sequencer, and after that, we're going to learn how to control it in real-time mode. Hey there guys, hope you're doing well. So as you can see, I've set a garage scene with a stunning Nissan GTR car, which also called as Godzilla. But anyway, all we want to do is to take some realistic renders with camera shake effects. So I want to change the viewport to one of the cameras that are already placed in the backside of the car. And here it is, yeah, it's okay. So you might have noticed that the bloom and lens flare effects are intensified in this camera. So let's check the specification of it. So as you can see, I choose an APS Canon camera with the sensor aspect ratio of 1.5. And now I want to change the focal length and set it on 80. I think 80 is appropriate for this shot. And now let's adjust the focus distance so that the camera focused on the rear lights of the car. So let's scroll down the details section and I want to emphasize the red lights coming from car's tail lights. So far, I'm going to increase the value of bloom and lens flare parameters. And here is the lens flare. Let's increase the value. As you can see, it reflects on the viewport. And I think it looks good now. Yeah, much better. So let's continue. Now that we are done with the camera's details, let's add a sequencer to this shot. And I want to introduce it as camera shake, I think is okay. So let's type it. Camera shake, okay. All right, we have a sequencer now. So first thing to do is to add the camera to the sequencer. So let's press on the track button and let's type the camera that I've placed in the backside. It is rear cam and here it is. Now we added our camera to the sequencer and let's increase the frame count for this sequence. I think 210 is appropriate and you can set it on any frame that you want. I mean, you are the author of your scene. Okay, now it is time to create a blueprint for camera shake effect. As you can see, I've already created one, but in order to teach you the process, I'm gonna do it again. So the first thing to do is right click on your content browser and click on the blueprint class. And once you have done that, a new window will appear and all you have to do is to type camera shake on the search section and okay let's correct it i'm typing camera shake and here it is camera shake base click on it and then select it and now it is time to give a name to the blueprint that we've created and i'm going to name it camera shake so let's type it and yeah, here we go. So double click on the blueprint that you created and then this window will pop up and just close the window and again, go to the content browser and double click on the blueprint. All right, as you can see, a new window has appeared on your screen. So first thing to do is to choose the camera shake pattern and I'm gonna choose the Perlin noise pattern. Okay, the second one, I mean. So once we have done that, four new sections will appear, location, rotation, field of view, and timing. And the first parameter that we want to make some changes on it is timing. And I'm gonna set the duration on zero. And by doing that, I can add camera shake effect to any part of the sequence. I mean, it can be added to any time interval. So in order to better understand the function of the other three parameters, I'm gonna add some movements to my camera and I mean I want to animate this sequence so let's add keyframes to frame zero and after that let's change the location of the camera from transform section and add keyframes to the last frame so let's play the sequence and as you can see here we have an animated scene and yeah 
looks good but let's just move the sequencer a little bit to the right side so we can click on this looping button here and when you click on it the animation that you've created will play repeatedly all right now it is time to add the camera shake to our sequencer just click on this plus button in the camera components and here it is in the camera shake section just click and select the blueprint that you've created and here we have the camera shake effect in our sequence just move it to the frames interval and expand it to all the frames all right now that we have added the blueprint to our sequence let's check the parameters of it and see the functions of them and location is the first parameter to be examined so let's just expand it and as you can see here we have two other parameters the amplitude multiplier and frequency multiplier well as it is clear in the viewport when i increase the amplitude multiplier the camera starts to move in a larger range and the frequency parameter controls the number of times to perform this action so now that we are familiar with these two parameters let's adjust them in a way that we get the best results and of course as i said before you are the author of your scene and the value of these parameters depends on the shot that you want to take render from. So the second parameter that we're going to check is rotation and it is exactly the same as the last one but the difference is there is no movement occurs in this parameter and it controls only the rotation of the camera and it is obvious in the viewport if you pay attention to it. And now I'm trying to get the best results by changing the value of amplitude and frequency of rotation. And I recommend you to set different values to better understand the function of these two parameters. And yeah, I think the given values for rotation parameter is good enough. So let's continue. And finally, we reach to the field of view parameter. So let's expand it. And just like the previous two sections, the field of view also got amplitude and frequency parameters. And what this parameter does is that it increases and decreases the field of view of the camera, something like zooming in and out. And once again, the frequency parameter controls the number of times this action is performed. And finally, I want to remind you again, just play with these numbers see how they are working and which proportion is appropriate for your scene because you are the author of your scene as i said many times before but beyond shadow of a doubt adding this effect not only makes your animations cool stunning and attractive but also makes you a professional in this industry and now if you're in this stage and you want to take some realistic renders check the video which has appeared on your screen and don't forget to leave your comments and boop the like button. See you in the next videos.